Hi everybody, I am Vichar Batla. I welcome you all to today's story session. This is hosted on Telltale Tuesdays. I'm grateful to all the organizers, Dr. Preeti Sharda and her team for inviting me to this platform to share my favorite story. So recently I have read this amazing story of The Go-Getter by Peter B. Kain. The story motivates me in my work. The story gives me some thought of thinking and rethinking and rethinking when I am stuck, when I feel that I cannot do it anymore. So the story tells you about not to give up, keep trying, keep trying and keep trying. So now you can yourself decide that who should be the audience for this, uh, for this story. As the book itself says that the go-getter is the book that needs to be added to every business person's essential reading list. But I would say that this book could be read by the students in college as well who are aspiring for their career, people who are in very early age of their career, people who are still in the career like for 10 years or more and the leadership team for sure. It will definitely give some insights to each one of us while I'll share the story from the book itself. So in this story, the go-getter, the person who is go-getter, his name is Peck. P-E-C-K, has a lead role to play, but his role will come later on. There are three other characters who start this story. So the story is started with the old man's thought. This old man is the owner of a very big company. This company is into lumbering and shipping, huge business, spread across various parts of the world. So this man whose name is Gappy, and don't mind if I would recommend just refer a few names in the book because it's difficult to remember the entire book. You can understand that. So this guy whose name is whose name is Cappy, ha, whose name is Cappy, he is an old man, he has a big business and he is supported by his son-in-law, son-in-law whose name is Pesley and who is also supported by his president whose name is Mr. Skinner. Now Mr. Skinner and Mr. Pesley whose name is Matt Pesley are a young blood and this guy who is Cappy Riggs is an old man. So this old man hardly visits the organization just to see that everything is going great. Rest of the administration and all the day-to-day -day work is taken care by these two guys, the young bloods, the Skinner and Pesley. Now what discussion is going on when we start this story is about the some sad parts that okay organization has seen no growth in past few years, freight charges are increasing, losses are coming up, we are not able to expand our business, question on growth, there are many things that they are discussing. And when they're discussing those business issues, the point that is coming up is the people. That what kind of people are we having? Why don't we have trained people? Why people are misusing our resources? Why people are wasting companies' money? And they could see that. And in the past, they had to lay off a couple of employees because of their wrong intention and wrongdoing. So uh, he had all rights. This old man had all rights to ask his son-in-law and the president that why this is happening, what is happening. And now what major thing happened that their very, very important employee whose name is Henderson in this story. So Henderson uh, son did some big case, a big blunder in the organization. And they got to know the story that because of his personal games, he used to waste the company's money and travel to places, etc. So they had to lay off him as well. And now that was a big question that who will take care of Henderson's responsibility. So the men decided that, okay, right now we don't have any ready resource and I think we need to hire people. So this old man said that, why didn't you train your people? You should always have a support. You should always have a plan B for it. So now who is going to be the one? Then they said, I guess, uh, Skinner said that, I guess, I think Andrew could do this job. So he said, but Andrew, could he take decisions? Does he take initiatives? And all that leadership question, because that role is of leadership. So he said, 
I haven't tested him yet, but I feel that he can do so because he's doing his present job nicely. But then old man is an old man. He's an experienced man. He said it doesn't mean that a person who is doing this job nicely, he would also do a higher responsibility when it is given to him. So then a question came that you should always test your employee. While this blame game was going on, who should take up this big, big responsibility? And if Andrew goes there, then who would take up Andrew's responsibility and he was handling something middle level management there in the present role when he would go abroad to China he had to had some bigger role to play but they were having a question whether he'd be able to do it or not so the conclusion came like that that either we find out a new resource where we have to find out who should be the right one and since Skinner and that Pesley didn't have great experience in hiring the right leadership people so they threw this particular responsibility on the shoulder of old man that is Cappy, Rick Scappy, that you would take this responsibility. We are young people. We are not getting the right person. We have also experienced some failure. Why not you take this role? So he didn't have much option and he was somewhere also wanting to test the person on its own. So then Rick Scappy took up this responsibility. And meanwhile, they thought that, okay, for a time being, let's send Andrew to that role of Henderson's role there in China. And uh, we'll see that whether he's able to do his responsibility well or not. But do tell him that this role is going to be temporary. So during that time, what happened that when they finished their discussion, there were arguments, definitely, there were questions questions and there were questions on performance and there were like question on recruitment as well. The discussion ended and now how it ended that it was the old man's responsibility to find out the right person for the organization for that role if Andrew is a failure. Now what happened? Then Andrew went Definitely, there is a job position for Andrew also, but they didn't pay much heed to that job position because that was not important at that very moment. On the same time, what happened, like once the discussion was over, they received a phone call and that phone call was by the receptionist and he says that, sir, there is somebody who wants to meet you. His name is Mr. Peck, William E. Peck. So then the old man said that, okay, send him to my room. By that time, Skinner had left the place and also so yeah so what happened like when Peck entered to the room and he took permission to be seated so when he sat down then Gabby could see that his half body was not functioning in a way that his he was limping his feet was not working he had some injury in his leg and also his half arm was not there and a person when he comes like that he is sitting and then uh, straight away he asked him like how can I help you so he said that I am here for the job and then by the way he said that so Cappy could make out that I think that you are a person who cannot anticipate refusal is it so he said yes sir that is so right about me after all I'm a salesperson and I'm here to make sure that I'm able to sell whatever you make but before I do that it is important for me to I sell myself to you so that you're convinced that I'm able to sell your goods there in the market too so I'm just uh, paraphrasing it but the way he he mentioned that so smartly it added something to Gabby's head that okay it was interesting so more questions came up more discussions came up and Gabby also asked about that how come he had to face his uh, physical ailment this way and he could share that because he was from the army background and there was war and there were fights and that is how he had sacrificed his own body in that and now because he could no more work there in the army so he is looking for a job as a civilian and he was really sad about his recent experience in one of the corporates where he did his hundred percent he did his very best but he was not rewarded the way he had to be rewarded and later he decided that okay uh, him moving is the right uh, right uh, step for him so he was looking for the job desperately he was looking for the job and it could be any job he could be given he said that I right now want job and I can do any any job that you would give me whether it is of bookkeeping whether it is of 
of typing it was of any kind so the person who was well experienced he was there for around 20 years in army he was a old man he was not a young man at all he was in his uh, late 40s or 50 and he was then focusing he was focusing on anything that could be given to him because job was more important so the passion that capi saw in him it made him feel so it made him feel and it made him rethink about it not about that big role where they had already thought of sending andrew but about andrew's position because now somebody was required who could manage job what andrew was doing so then he called up his uh, team now we have two people in his team that is pesley his son in law sorry his son in law and skinner so skinner came up inside and skinner said i have taken his interview and he was rejected in the interview why is he here so he told yes i was interviewed by skinner and i was rejected i was later being interviewed by pesley i was rejected and now i'm here to discuss with you because i want to tell you that i really have strong strong very strong traits that your business is looking forward to so he opened up his case and presented with all all that figures and all what he could do for the organization and he is ready for any role so seeing his desperation and passion they decided to give him a role the skinner was not happy with the decision because he felt like the emotions should not come in business whereas um, Capi was having some heart for this man, seeing his physical state, seeing that he is from the army background, and then he thought, okay, let us test him. So while he got the job offer, uh, this man, uh, the old man whose wrist Capi told him, that sir, now just because you have told to get the job, you are getting the job, but I can assure you that you would be given huge pressure. you would be given big task to do anything and everything irrespective of the ailments that you are going through you would be treated as a any normal employee in the organization you would go through various tests and trials so it is up to you whether you want to start your job or you still want to think but he is very confident he said definitely i would like to work and i want to join so that was one go getter thing that he was a very straightforward man he he knew that what he wanted whatever is the circumstances he accepted the job the next question came up how early can you join us he said in the next hour just after one hour i'll join that now this has happened so then he it was a discussion at 12 o'clock that when uh, uh, when they finished up the discussion and they gave him a job offer that okay you would be helping in these many chores and what all office work you would be doing so finally he left and he left for his work whatever work he had to complete in an hour's time and in between he just went to some mall and there he found this man capi was also there and then because like it was just next to the office and he showed his business card to him so basically when he took this one hour he went to get his business card because in his mind he was so strongly decided that i am going to get the job here so uh, it was very beautifully written on his business card when he went and saw him and he says that okay lumber and it was like rick's lumber and lodging company lumber and its product san francisco represented by william e peck so he has he didn't give any tag or designation to his title but he had given represented by so that means he was so confident it was all gold uh, that some copper plated and uh, howsoever that metallic plating was done which was very much visible that this work cannot be completed in an hour's time so when uh, when uh, capi to holded his business card and he said that since when were you trying to apply in my organization he said a week before i decided my mind that i want to work in this organization and i will try every every everything possible to meet you to discuss with you that i do have a potential to apply and that was pretty expressive like impressive that somebody who knew from very first day that i want to join the organization at least i'll try my best and then we'll see what happens so this was in now peter is selected i mean peck was selected peck is in the organization he is given the task and the task are very critical now we'll now discuss what happened next hmm 
So now the situation is that uh, Skinner is supposed to give him as difficult task as possible so that he makes sure that the sir, the old man, Cappy has, no, has not done a good thing while coming emotionally in taking the decision of hiring somebody just seeing his physical ailment. But uh, so what happened that he gave him those tasks that people don't like. He told him to those areas where uh, people would like going, doing that kind of a job, picking up those kind of woods with smell, sting and difficult to carry, difficult to sell. Hardly there is any buyer of that particular work that was given to him. Knowing his challenges, he was given this kind of a job. Now, because this guy, Peck, was so determined in his work and which is one of the very important lessons for me to learn from this story and that is the reason that why am I sharing this story that his spirit of accepting anything, whatever is given to him is amazing. So this man, when he was given the task like that, so what he did for two months, he couldn't, like he took his time to be in the system, to understand what we do, where we sell, who are the customers, what are the freight charges, where all we supply, all that thing. So he understood the market for two months and after two months, the his results started coming up. So what happened here, I would just read at the, as it is. So he went to place to place and he was, wherever he was going, he was representing the company. He tried to get some order. So from Salt Lake City, he wired an order from two car loads of Lark Rustic and Ogden, he managed to get some order. And then from Snicker had, so Snicker, uh, this person, Skinner, I'm sorry. So Skinner was trying hard to get order from some places where he was not able to get he made it possible through his artistic skills, through his selling skills, and also at a higher price. So that was also very amazing for him. So Skinner was really stunned seeing his performance, which was coming up after two months in the organization, understanding the system. And he could get the business from the places where it was really difficult for anybody to get in that to in a very short span of time. So what happened? So after seeing his performance, so Mr. Skinner was forced to wire him for mercy and instruct him to devote his talent to the the disposal of other work as well. Eventually, he completed all the work which was given to him and he was successfully able to do that. So when this came up, like Skinner had given him various challenges with the intention, with some different intention, he proved himself in every that work with that determination that he had to do. So what happened, he, Skinner, could not stop himself in calling to Cappy and saying that this guy is really a good guy. He has come up with five big orders in such a short span of time from the areas that were difficult to crack, from areas where I was trying a lot since long time and it, he had made it possible. Yeah, so... When this happened, he said, now I think that we should raise his pay after a year because he has done a great job. So then the scappy told him that why have you, why you have to wait for one year since he is doing a great job? He must be rewarded in the next month itself because he has proved himself more than you expected. We already underpaid him just to judge him, just to test him. And now is the time when you can really give him that motivation because he also did so finally, as a result, his salary was increased because of his good work. Parallelly, uh, they also discussed Cappy and Skinner about Andrew's performance who was sent abroad in China market to set up an office, I mean to continue with the office. So um, Sk Skinner didn't give some good reviews about him that he is very dependent on decision making. We keep on hearing from him every other day for every small decision that he has to take. So they were not much happy with Andrew's performance. Parallelly, he was doing a great job. So then Cappy 
happy tool that I want to test this guy even more. And for that, I want Skinner, you help me out with the complete plan that how we do it. So he prepared a complete plan in the sense that Cappy and Skinner together did. And for that, the next step was that Cappy had to Cappy had to call Skinner when Skinner is at home. He is sick. So that kind of plan that me and now the story is really interesting and our takeaway point starts from here. So uh, they made a plan that uh, this guy Peck who was doing amazing work would be called at Skinner's home while Skinner is sick. He is staying and resting in his bedroom and uh, then uh, he was told that you have to come sharp at 1250 12 50 in the afternoon so this man arrives one of the great um, point that i learned from peck is that he was very punctual if he's given a time of 12 55 he will be there at 12 55 if it is 1 30 it is 1 30 there's no five minutes before or five minutes after Maybe he could be five minutes before, but he will arrive there at their place exactly at 11.30 or whatever time, whatever time is given to him. So being punctual is something which people really, really like in the corporate sector or in your professional environment. I would. So finally, uh, the story of this hero now starts where Peg was tested by giving him a job, a task which was not that too professional also. It was uh, Cappy who had to give somebody a blue vase, which was particularly specifically available in that one shop, which has a specific address. And now this man was told that he has to get that vase. Now this ma man ran here and there to get that specific place and then get, get that particular shop and then that vase, which even he didn't know how to recognize. Today is the time when technology is available. Anybody can send a WhatsApp photo and we could locate the place anywhere or a location. But that time such things were not there. So he was just told that go to X street, Y street and you will find this or that and that's how he was figuring out he went to that place he couldn't see anything like that and then he thought okay let me recall and ask him again that what is the exact address and then he called him again he was not at home his mate said even I don't know when he'll come back then instead of coming back this fellow, what he did is he thought that let me go again and search again because there was no other way out. So now think about when there is no other way, he thought of instead of sitting idle, instead of reading, instead of not doing anything, coming with a no, let me go back to the place again, what he recommended. He went to X street, he went to Y street, he went to Z street and then finally said, okay, if I'm told to go to XYZ, there could be something, a different address let me go there. So he went to R, S, T, all that places where he was not even told, but because they were in the vicinity and he felt like maybe mistakenly he would have skipped to tell me the right address. So he went there. And finally, after going from one block to another, he could find there was an art shop where there was a vase. He was super happy. Job is done. Finally, on time. He was a very punctual guy. He is bringing the thing. Yes, man, kind of a person. Now, when he knocked the door, the shop was closed. Nobody was coming out and he was disappointed. What to do? Now, anybody, what we would do, we would just sit. Sorry, boss not possible shop was closed this man went to the hotel the nearby hotel he collected a telephone directory he read the name of the shop there when he was standing that was b cohen's shop b c o h e n cohen's shop so he went to the directory he saw the total 90 names were there one nine name 19 names were there with the same thing and now there nothing was written that this is an art shop this is not an art shop he was figuring out that how to do it so finally he got his dollar converted into cents there in the hotel he went to the telephone booth and called one by one on each number with all patients when he called most of them were the wrong numbers, then the numbers were not available, people were very angry and then wrong numbers. Everybody have a different behavior or a way to respond and they have all right to respond. So then finally, no number matched with the requirement. Then he felt what to do next. He said, maybe had I really read the name correctly, let me go back and check again. 
he felt that oops he made a mistake it's not c o h e n is it is c o h n how could he misread anything and already there's a short of time so finally again he went to another hotel took a directory and there were aged names with c o h n he went back to the telephone booth again doing the same job and he was really tired and especially when somebody having some physical difficulty it is it is very obvious that the person would get irritated people like us get irritated when the same job you're doing again and again it's not working we don't even go to that extent the way peck has gone so peck called all those eight numbers people behave very differently with him and there were numbers working numbers not working finally there was one number which which worked actually means in the sense they responded positively and she said that okay govin is this is has a art shop but presently he cannot be available on the call because he has gone to vice place for a dinner if you want to speak to him call mr y now this guy peck what he did he took the number of y he called to y and y told that he did not make him speak because kohan is busy having his dinner then he said tell him that his shop is getting fire and he has to immediately help and it he has to immediately attend the call now anybody who who was told that you know your shop is at place and you have to anybody would listen to the news and respond and react to it so he react it he came to the phone and he said what happened to my shop and what happened to my art gallery and he said nothing has happened to your art gallery i wanted to speak to you i have that vast that i need to collect from your shop it is very important for me so tell me how can i get it your shop is closed i want you to come immediately right now so that i can collect it now he said that i cannot come at this moment but you can call my employee whose no name is so and so so finally uh, the name of that fellow to whom he had to contact again peck had to contact again his name was harman joost now harman joost number was given by that kohan while having a dinner when he called him then somebody else picked the call and he said that this joost has gone for a dinner in a country club his mother called him actually and uh, means mother answered the call when peck called him so but mother was not knowing which country club what is the address there so many any country club here then how would i find out then the same trial this poor fellow kept on dialing all the country club country club and finally he could connect to this guy which was named juiced and juiced told that okay i can do that but uh, i have to first confirm can go hell that whatever story that you are telling is a true story that how would i believe that anybody is a fake call or is a real call so finally he took his own time he took his 30 40 minutes and again get got back to it and then he said that okay i'm arriving to that place around 9 o'clock in the evening if you could come by 9 o'clock we can solve this out so finally this happened and he was close to his destination they finally arrived to that particular place and when the was bus was given to him suddenly the price came up what is the price now the price was like 2000 us dollars that time the price of that was but he had just 10 dollars with him now he said that um, what could be the way out can you please accept the check he said sorry i cannot accept the check i don't know you i want the cash now that was also a problem he had first of all he had struggled so much to read somewhere now because he didn't have enough money in his pocket he didn't want to be refused so he suddenly called skinner to help him out because he's buying a mask uh, i mean buying a vase for this man and then finally uh, skinner could not help because skinner said i'm not well there's no buddy and there's a sunday and how can i do this i don't know same way he called pesley and pesley also so had one or the other reason to deny it now he was just wondering what should i do how should i get it done etc 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 finally he told that if this man could accept a a ring a ring so he had a diamond or a platinum ring with him in the hotel he said that if you could just take that ring value that ring and if i could give it as a security so he said okay we can try that you can get it out so then finally he went back to his hotel he collected his ring he came back there he gave it he they valued it 
it was like twenty five hundred dollars finally then they exchanged that and he got that was and then he kept it and by the time the even the timing of giving was also over so he arranged one of his friend to drop into a particular address where he could hand over the was to this person so all that journey happened and i am very much now summarizing this because it's a very deep and a very lengthy story otherwise and the kind of episodes that this man had gone through to get this was so finally he arrived there at the station where this man was sitting boarding the train for the was though this man arrived a little late than what he promised at time but the situation was so so critical that it was almost impossible for him to do this job when he arrived there and he said boss this is the thing that i have done Cappy was completely amazed with the thought that how can you do something which was completely impossible and he said that man today you have won my heart and he when he told him that this all thing was plotted it was all plotted just to check how much strength you have in achieving and what kind of approach you have all that blocks that you saw on the road whether it was the shop being closed whether then you thinking of okay just throwing a stone on on that glass window and just grabbing it up then we purposely had pulls in between so that there you could not take that step also and then there were all the blockages of not having enough money skinner denying you bestly denying you and then uh, going to so many directories calling on so many numbers everything was plotted and we had to test you so he was very angry he was angry that you don't know how much ailment i have to give given to my body i have not eaten my lunch i didn't have my dinner properly i had my dinner soon after i had got the wa- was in my hand you don't know how dreadful it was and he was yelling he was very angry and disappointed at what kind of test it is man i was just fulfilling my orders to you because i really respect and i have learned this so now uh, but when this uh, owner when cappy told him the reason that he is looking for a very big role for him and that big role requires a test that we have to go through and the pay that he's going to get is 12 10 some big number that he he was not even he could never expect in his life and the kind of role that he is getting so everything was something which is wow for him he got the job he was already doing a great job but he was now presently he was doing all kind of job but when he proved himself in that specific job he was given something which he really deserved money which he really deserved praise which is really deserved and respect which he really deserved and that is the story that how this man was a go getter later in the story they also had a dialogue that what made you be the way you are how you are so strong with it i have tested so many people in my life like i remember out of 20 people i tested stood you are the second one who has done this job all 18 otherwise have come up with one excuse or the other that it is not possible because the shops are closed or because there is no money or whatever but you are the person who went to all the means possible and got it done what is that role in your life that you were able to do that then he said that we in our army we were always told to respect our commander's decision if our commander has said something it has to be done we always say it shall be done so yes so it shall be done so so that much faith we had in our commander so we believed if the commander is instructing something to us it has some long term gain for the entire team for the entire organization for the entire nation when it comes to army and with that thought we just blindly obeyed the orders of our commander and with the same instinct when i met you at the first place i could feel the vision behind the success of the organization and i could trust you deeply from my heart and value you from my heart that is why that i was blindly believing on the thing that you have told and i have got it for you so so that is the beautiful story 
as i said like uh, i have uh, recorded this story in few phases because there was lot to talk about and it takes time when it comes to sharing a story and reading a story there's a big difference i enjoyed reading it i enjoyed sharing it with you and the message that i want to give you is always be go getter in life i try to apply this story in my life too and it's very recently because i read this recently and though there was a thought of go getter before as well but even after the story i become more inspired by his peck story that anything is possible if you have a wish and you have a will to do it there would be challenges to test us so that we should not achieve what we want to achieve but we have to overcome all these challenges and we have to surpass all those obstacles that are coming in between to attain what best we can achieve and this can be done and tested and applied everywhere in our life whatever it is be it personal be it professional and just keep applying keep learning good things and keep applying i hope you like the story happy reading and thank you very much take care